Hello and welcome to the Red Rage Gaming Crew channel. My name is Dan and today we will take an Amiga 500 and take it back to the future. <laughs> Yeah, floppy disks. You remember these things. Like unreliable, total crap. <laughs> yeah, we don't need them anymore because I found something while I was searching on the internet. Um, yeah, I found something that I didn't really know that I needed, but the internet told me just to just buy it. So uh, I bought it. It's an Amiga 500 USB floppy emulator uh, with uh, from GoTech, I believe, and you can buy it in the in Europe or in the US um, through Amiga Store EU. EU. Um, they have it in packages with USB sticks already formatted for your purpose and some longer cables for extension because the original ones could be too short and yeah let's give it a try let's just put it in to the Amiga and test it why not <laughs> so um, yeah here we go uh, I will show you how to format the USB stick just put this thing in the Amiga and here's the package I waited for it for about I don't know it took two weeks maybe was shipped from Spain and funny thing is I've got a greeting card in there had written really like that it's a cool store so yeah actually very light packaging um, very light package the part itself weighs about 200 grams it's just like 3d printed plastic but it's a pretty sturdy and well made so there goes the card. Thank you, the biggest star. By the way, I'm not sponsored by them. <laughs> but I'm just uh, interested in building new things with old hardware. <laughs> so what do we got here? Yeah, some bubble wrap. Mm. We'll get to that later. <laughs> I really, I, I really, I really, really uh, enjoy bubble wrap and like it. So yeah, this is the part, you got a USB input for your USB stick, you got, um, there's actually a little micro speaker down here who just emulates the floppy disk drive noise, if you want that, <laughs> you can just unplug it if you don't want it. You got an LCD display that shows you some error codes or some information about the USB stick that you have um, plugged in. You got two buttons to control the device. You got two uh, other LED lights that show you the status of your USB floppy drive. Also, this is sturdy 3D printed frame. That's pretty good. And we got a floppy connector down here and the power connector over here. Yeah, looks interesting. Now let's see if it fits. <laughs> Yeah, to take about we will we will take this original floppy drive out. It also saves some weight because the new one will be very much lighter. There's a new part. <laughs> All you're missing would be some screwdrivers. Ah, okay. Movie magic. <laughs> there we have the screwdrivers. We have to take the right bits also. My Amiga 500 comes with some Phillips and Tox screws. I don't know. Maybe. The three Phillips screws were uh, swapped out. I don't know, maybe they were Torx screws. But I can only talk for my Amiga. This will be a slightly longer video because I really want to show you how to put this drive in and exchange all the cables and the shenanigans for this uh, thing. So it really works out for you and we have a good guide to show. Actually, I'm not sure if I fix it, got an uh, <laughs> Amiga 500 teardown or an Amiga 500 fixing installation? That's a good question. I will have it. I will give it a search. <laughs> yeah, screw, 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 screw. So, yeah, let's turn, let's turn it over. You can just pull it that way after you unscrew everything. And we'll have the keyboard here. The whole keyboard module can, can be taken out like this. It's just one cable and some clamps that keeps it in there. 
<laughs> and also the scoops, yeah. And then we have this uh, static EZ shielding thing here. Um, we have to remove some screws to get it off. So let's unscrew that. Also, I believe Torx screws, yeah. And after that, there's a very important thing. Because there are some metal clamps over here and there. You have to unclamp them. And be careful, it's a pretty sharp edge on the metal. You know, it's the 80s. Those kids, they can surely cut their finger if they work on electronics. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Actually, be careful. Just use a uh, uh, plastic sponge or things like that to... Um, unbend the pins because they are really pretty sharp and actually I don't know it's kind of like a little bit of um, oxida oxidation on this metal thing if anyone got uh, has a good idea how to get rid of that or how to get a new one just uh, write me under the video just write me a comment I'm pretty interesting uh, interested in exchanging this metal ESD shielding so we just unplugged the old uh, drive, you have to unscrew it from the side, there's one side screw down here. So we have to change for the Phillips head, it's a Phillips head screw, and we just take it out like that. There you go. One drive less. <laughs> I would say one mechanical problem is if you exchange the cable just um, be sure the red ribbon is on the right side thing is uh, exactly an old Panasonic Matsushita I don't know what yet this thing is built drive <laughs> no it should be the original one um, but actually uh, if you know what yet this thing is built just write me in the comments I'd like to know uh, and also if uh, you know somebody who wants a working Amiga 500 drive this thing has still got some mileage to go um, I don't know how about international shipping costs but um, maybe write it down in the comments <laughs> so here we got the new USB floppy adapter and we just exchange it just screw it in with this one screw it uh, seems to be a little bit of a flimsy solution um, to just fixate it with one screw but actually after the case is uh, closed the whole thing's pretty stable in there I was surprised and I was also surprised that my floppy cable was uh, a bit too short <laughs> um, no it fits just right in but um, if you really want to make it sure just buy this thing with the longer floppy cable it's just it's it's worth it it fits but it barely fits As you see, we need some uh, a bit of force to get it in there, but it works. <laughs> yeah, could be better. Let's see this thing in a close-up. So there we go, the built-in floppy USB adapter works like a charm. We will test it right now. But at first, I will show you how to format your USB stick forward. So we need an USB stick, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, and we just need to open the Windows Disk Manager and format it to FAT32 or FAT32. Um, it won't uh, work with an NTSC formatted one or XFAT format formatted one. So you really need to make sure it's FAT. 32 and also it needs to be MBR formatted not GPT not guide partition table because that also won't work it should be master boot record compatible so MBR formatting is crucial to make this thing work actually if your stick is GPT like my newer ones you can format them with a disk part in the Windows console if you'd like to do it by yourself and also, if you want to have a tutorial for this part, just write it down in the comments and maybe I will um, make one later. So here we go, just format it. So after we formatted the USB stick, we just need to get some software onto there 
and I will provide all the links to the software downloads down below, except for my totally legal, legal copy images of my old Amiga games. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need to go to GitHub and get floppy, flash floppy. Just um, the latest stable release, and if you open it, you, we will need to copy the HCXS dfe.config to your USB stick and also from the Amiga subfolder the autoboot HFE and then you just need to copy all your ADF images from Amiga software over to your USB stick. Yeah, I sped that up. It's an old one <laughs> but it still works. So we just have to remove it carefully from our German Windows as always. Um, and this is how it looks. If it's finished, you just need to put your USB stick in there and it will load the flash floppy software from the USB stick. Let's have a look. We got Workbench 1.3 and here we go. Yeah, <laughs> flash floppy file selectors loading and it's reading the config. And uh, here we go, all the ADF images, you can um, select them and put them into different virtual floppy drives inside of the software. Pretty easy to select and use. Yes, we have the drive slots here. So you can, mo can mount several disk images for games that have maybe two or five disks. We all know this was a hassle. <laughs> yeah, um, here we have the settings. You can select save and reboot just to reboot into the game and change display colors also. We have a pretty wide array of display colors to choose from. Ooh, red. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, that's cool. Red on a black background like a guru meditation. I like that. <laughs> um, but maybe I will go with the channel color red just to make sure you know where you are. <laughs> also make sure that I know where I am. <laughs> um, yeah, red looks fine. Here are some more options. LED backlight standby, SD USB standby. So you can customize just about everything on this thing. And if you hit save and reboot, you will save your mounted discs. I've mounted Lotus Turbo Challenge 2. We will check if it loads. It loads and I even had a trainer on my old floppy disk <laughs> from the Goonies. Okay, funny. Um, yeah, I just feel like 1991. <laughs> <sighs> Chatter dreams. And we are back in the 90s. Excuse the crappy monitor sound. <laughs> I really need a solution for um, the sound to hook it up to the boxes. Yeah, and also if you have a Competition Pro for the Amiga 500, it just like feels, it just feels like the 90s. And I'm in full retro flashback mode right now. That's cool. Some childhood memories, and we will check it out. Actually. We I don't have any big latency here and it works just fine. And even the sound is right. <laughs> yeah, uh, so just have some 90s uh, racing fun here. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh my god. I really miss those engine sounds and the tire screech. Yes, totally authentic 90s tire screech. Every car sounded like that in the 90s. <laughs> uh, so let's have a look uh, if I'm still good at it or if I'm getting too old. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, uh, I can't do any new game reviews, I have to play the old ones. <laughs> um, yeah, if you'd like to have some old game reviews, just write me down below in the comments. I'd like to do that, I'd really love to do that. Even if I'm not good at the old games right now, but I will get into it with some time. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching. You are awesome. If you really like this channel, give us a subscription on the left side or you can have more videos on the right side. Actually, the only thing that I can say is, hope to see you again. Yours truly, Dan. <laughs>